and good afternoon. Today is Thursday, the 20th of January, 2022, and this is the English language summary of the daily press briefing at the Center for COVID-19 Situation Administration, or CCSA. Today, the Prime Minister chaired the CCSA general meeting. Many important issues were discussed at length and carefully considered with the different line agencies sharing their assessments and proposals. As I alluded to yesterday, there are many important updates to share with you today, which were just covered in the Thai briefing by Dr. Tuisin. Please bear with me as I will try my best to run through the updates in detail and then summarize them for you once again at the end. Should you need further clarification, please do engage with us on the Facebook page of the Public Relations Department, as many of you have already been doing, as it helps us identify what information is useful and where we need to clarify further in our successive briefings. So let me turn right away then first to an update on the adjustments in COVID control measures and COVID designations. The general CCSA meeting just now heard the assessments and presentation from the Ministry of Public Health on the overall global and regional situation of this latest spread of the Omicron variant, which in general terms has seen a very big spike in infections, but a stabilized and in some cases diminished rate of fatalities from those infections. The situation domestically in Thailand is quite similar. Infections have increased but are doing so at a manageable rate and is now stabilizing with trends suggesting a decrease very soon. The number of patients with severe COVID-19 infections is also stabilizing and the rate of fatalities as well is relatively speaking, relative to the Delta variant, quite low. The CCSA general meeting therefore agreed to adjust the zoning categories for disease control measures. And you have those categories up there on screen. This will be effective from this coming Monday, the 24th of January, 2022. To reflect the overall positive trends that we are seeing, the number of controlled zones in orange will be reduced from 69 to 44 provinces. And the number of high surveillance areas in yellow will increase to 25 provinces. For some more detail in, on, excuse me, what this would entail is that in the controlled zones, the orange zones there, restaurants and eateries can still resume normal operating hours, but the consumption of alcoholic beverages remains banned. We were reminded just now that gatherings in these zones must not exceed 500 persons. In the high surveillance areas, the yellow zone, the measures that restaurants must follow are more relaxed as dining and drinking alcoholic beverages in the stores are allowed. Due to the decrease in infections in high surveillance and actually also the pilot tourism areas, the meeting just now approved a time extension of alcoholic sales at restaurants in these areas from 2100 hours to 2300 hours. That's from 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Restaurants must certainly continue to meet SHA plus or Thai stop Thai two plus standards to be allowed to serve alcoholic drinks. It was also reminded just now that in the high surveillance zones, gatherings must not exceed 1,000 persons. All areas will certainly have to continue adhering to COVID-free settings and use commercial prevention. Moreover, the meeting also approved a relaxation of the following countrywide measures, two to be exact. The first being that from the 1st of February, 2022, work from home will become non-compulsory and will be implemented as deemed appropriate by each agency or employer. The second relaxation is that due to the improving situation, the meeting agreed to 
reduce the recommended self-quarantine period for high-risk persons from 10 to 7 days, followed by 3 days of self-monitoring. ATK tests must be taken on day 5 or 6 and day 10. Let me turn now to updates on measures for entering the country. Registration for test and go will resume on the 1st of February 2022. That means travelers from all countries and areas, not just the 63 previously designated, but all countries and areas, will be eligible to apply for this scheme. At the same time, instead of one test being required upon arrival, two RT-PCR tests will be required, one on the first day of arrival and the second one on day five of arrival. What this means in practical terms and what should be prepared therefore is proof of hotel booking for day one and day five, a confirmed payment for the SHA plus hotel and prepayment of the two RT-PCR tests, a certificate of vaccination, vaccine passport. Of course, as it had always been, 72 hours before the flight, you must present the COVID-free test. All of this would be uploaded to the Thailand Pass system, as was the case before. Regarding the hotel booking for day one and day five, these hotels can be different hotels so as to accommodate certainly the possibility that you would be traveling in those days. The other update I have for you is that from the 1st of February, the sandbox areas will be expanded to include Kok Chang in Trat province, and in Chonburi province, Bang Lamung, Pattaya, Siracha, Kok Si Chang, Satahit. Travelers who wish to visit these areas through the sandbox scheme will be able to register in the Thailand Pass system. These travelers will also be able to travel to the original sandbox areas, including Phuket, Krabi, Panga, Suratani, in particular, Kok Samui, Kok Pangan, and Kok Tao. The meeting just now also discussed and agreed in principle that the Ministry of Public Health, together with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, will work on plans to further donate vaccines to neighboring countries and countries in Africa via the program that is called African Vaccine Association Trust, or AVAT or through the support of the WHO. It was also discussed to return the vaccine doses that were swapped at an earlier time from Singapore and Bhutan with our gratitude and thanks. The details will be worked out and based on the aspiration for this vaccine donation from Thailand to support humanitarian assistance and also to promote cross-border trade, especially in neighboring countries. Just now, the Prime Minister underlined, in fact, that we are all in this together. And now that Thailand is in a position to do so, we will do our part in donating vaccines to ensure that we join the fight in the global fight against COVID. So let me sum up once again the main points that I just detailed, three to be exact. The first, relax measures countrywide no extension of the work from home compulsory measure. In the yellow zones, alcoholic beverages will be served up until 11 p.m. or will be able to be served up until that time. Test and go is resuming on the 1st of February. And instead of one test, we are now requiring two tests. That test and go scheme also is now open to all countries and areas and not just the 63 previously designated. And finally, the sandbox has been expanded to add additional areas in two provinces. Let me now return to the usual updates that we have for audiences. And that would be firstly the update on the arrival of international travelers. 
during the 1st to the 19th of January, 2022, and you can see there on screen, 134,459 travelers enter Thailand. Of this number, the majority, or 65,633 travelers, entered via the test and go, or quarantine exemption scheme. 47,899 international travelers entered via the sandbox scheme and the remaining 20,927 via the quarantine or alternative quarantine scheme. The majority of international travelers are from these top 10 countries of origin that you see on screen during 1 to 19 January, namely Russia, Germany, the US, the UK, France, Sweden, Japan, Australia, Denmark, and the UAE. Turning now to the general situation of COVID in the country, we have logged today new confirmed cases at 8,129 cases, a slight increase from yesterday. It brings our total accumulated number of confirmed cases to over 2 million. That's 2 million. 353,062 cases, as you see in front of you. New recoveries, happy to report as always, 6,978 cases, and unfortunately, new fatalities at a relative low, 19 cases for today. We will now go to the list once again of the top 10 provinces with COVID-19 cases. A lot of red numbers today, up slightly notable jump in the number of infections in Bangkok. I believe it was 800 plus yesterday, and now we're seeing 1,168, still a manageable number. And the list goes on to Samut Prakan, Chonburi, Phuket, and onwards. Let's move now to progress in our vaccine drive. Yesterday, we administered 489,455 doses of the vaccine. That's almost 500,000, bringing the total accumulated number of vaccinations to over 110 million doses. This registers us as 72.1% of the total population that, have received, that has received excuse me, the first dose of the vaccine while the percentage of the total population receiving their second dose stands at 66.4%. For those receiving a booster dose, that number is 15.3% of the population. That is all I have for today. I look forward to seeing you all again on Monday. And in the meantime, stay safe, have a very nice weekend, and thank you. สวัสดีค่ะครับขอบพระคุณนะครับ